Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley. It's Friday, that means we're this close to a weekend full of video games, and I wanna know what you're playing in the comments. I'm probably gonna be doing Octopath and No Man's Sky, cause, well, it's that kind of weekend. Anyway, before we get to all the relaxing, there is newsing to be done. After the runaway success of Fortnite, it looks like EA has a lot of plans for Battle Royale games. They're not the only ones. Uh, upcoming Battlefield 5 is gonna have Battle Royale mode. Uh, Activision's Call of Duty Black Ops 4 will as well. But EA may also be planning its own separate free-to-play game in the genre. In an earnings call with investors, EA CFO Blake Jorgensen was asked if Battlefield 5's Battle Royale mode would be broken out as a standalone game similar to Fortnite. Jorgensen said it wouldn't, but GamesIndustry.biz reported that he hinted at the possibility of a standalone Battle Royale game in the future. He said, we're interested in experimenting with a free-to-play standalone game that might be in a shooter genre or another genre, but I don't think that's how we're looking at the Battlefield stuff right now. Uh, considering how much money Fortnite is making, I guess that's not a huge surprise, but we'll see what EA has planned exactly. League of Legends fans lost their minds this week after one of the founders of Riot Games suggested they might make a new game based on the wildly popular MOBA. Mark Merrill tweeted, should we build an MMO, yay or nay? This tweet, which may or may not have been a joke, promptly set the internet, or at least, you know, their internet on fire with tons of responses. A lot of them were actually very positive to the idea. Whether or not Riot makes an MMO based on League of Legends remains to be seen, but the developer has definitely been building out the game's lore over the years, so well, maybe there's enough to support it. Recently, Riot launched a new interactive lore world map for the game, showing the locations of each champion, along with lots of information about their own backstories. So, we shall see. I don't know, MMOs are, for the most part, not the trend anymore. Everyone wants to get all Battle Royale, but could be interesting to see. Now, for my fellow Nino Kuni fans, we do have some information about the upcoming DLC for Nino Kuni 2. In a tweet, Bandai Namco said it's gonna release three content updates over the next several months. The first is called the Adventure Pack DLC. It's a free update, it's gonna release on August 9th, and it's got a lot of new challenges, like uh, new floors for the faraway forest cave, two new bosses to fight, and if you beat the game already, you'll be able to unlock additional quests. The other DLC packs will be available as part of the game's 20 season pass. First is coming this winter, the second will release early next year. It looks like EA may have gotten rid of its On The House program, just kind of quietly, the program that gave away free EA games on PC. Gamers have noticed that the link to the program on the EA Origin website has disappeared. And according to some gamers, it went down on July 25th. Now when you go to the URL for On The House, it takes you to the origin access page instead. A Reddit user said they asked an EA customer service representative about the program and the rep stated, right now origin on the house services are closed by EA. And you might remember the program launched back in 2014 by offering dead space for free. And then there would be some new offerings every month or so. No word yet on whether this change is permanent or what they're planning to do, but stay tuned. The developer of the raising game Onrush says that a major update is coming for the game despite layoffs at the studio. A tweet from the game's official account says that the game has a big update coming at the start of August, and it also says the update will include something a lot of you have been asking for. Hmm. They didn't elaborate. Eurogamer speculates that it's probably ranked mode, which would make a lot of sense. It was reported earlier this month that Onrush, which released in June, didn't perform as well as parent company Codemasters had expected, which is what prompted layoffs at the studio. Those who got sacked included Onrush's director, Paul Rushy Roshinsky, as well as other senior members of the team. Nintendo's got a whole new Labo creation kit, the Vehicle Kit. It released a brand new trailer showing off three new Toy-Con projects that include a steering wheel for a car minigame, a plane controller, and another for a submarine. Don't put it in the bathtub or anything probably because no cardboard. The new kit will arrive on September 14th for the Switch. It's gonna retail for $69.99, which is the same cost as the Variety kit that released earlier this year, a little bit cheaper than the Robot kit. Nintendo officials have said that sales of Labo have met their expectations, but they also said that the kits will have a longer lifespan than traditional games and that they haven't reached their full potential yet. So we shall see. It does seem like Labo didn't quite catch fire in the overall community the way it potentially could have. But if it's performing to expectation, great. 
Elizabeth Banks is directing a new Charlie's Angels reboot. Hopefully it goes way better than the TV series they tried a few years ago, but she's found her angels. Kristen Stewart, Naomi Scott, and Ella Balinska will be the new kick-ass crime-fighting detective trio. You know who Kristen Stewart is, probably. May not be as familiar with Naomi Scott and Ella Balinska. Both are kind of up-and-comers. Scott recently wrapped the live-action Aladdin film where she plays Princess Jasmine, and this is Balinska's first big role after a series of UK TV appearances. This group will be just one set of angels, according to the Hollywood Reporter Reporter in this newly imagined universe, the Townsend Agency is now a worldwide security and intelligence service that has teams around the planet. Banks isn't just directing either, which is nice because I love her. I love seeing her and stuff. She's stepping into the role of a Bosley, a role that both Bill Murray and Bernie Mac played in the previous films. I'm kind of excited about it. Just knowing that she's involved, I loved Pitch Perfect and I don't care who knows. It's another day, so that means we have another new Netflix show to talk about as well. This time, it's a high school set zombie story called Daybreak, which is based on a graphic novel of the same name. Against the backdrop of a post-apocalyptic zombie world filled with cheerleaders turned Amazonian warriors, roving packs of jock marauders, even a bully turned pacifist samurai, the story follows a 17-year-old high school outcast named Josh who's trying to find his missing girlfriend. I have some bad news for you, dude. The odds aren't great. Rampage director Brad Payton is spearheading the 10 episode project and it's expected to premiere sometime next year. So we'll see how it goes. I like all of the graphic novel adaptations we're getting of stuff and I think series are an awesome place for them. Also for books. I think, I think series is a better place for most books than just movie adaptations, but maybe that's just me. Hey, if you thought Home Alone was pretty cool, but hey, maybe it'd be like way better as an R-rated stoner comedy. You're in luck. Ryan Reynolds has it covered with this weird, kind of weird movie at Fox called Stoned Alone, which sounds like a quasi spoof of the famous family film series. According to Deadline, who broke the story, it's about a 20 something stoner who misses his plane for a ski trip and is left home alone where he gets baked out of his mind and begins to believe someone's trying to break into his house. Is it really thieves? Is he paranoid? We don't know, but I'm sure we'll see. Ryan Reynolds is producing for an up and coming indie comedy director named Augustine Frizzell. This is a real movie. It is actually happening. This thing got greenlit. I guess they were like, hey, get that Deadpool guy. Just greenlight whatever he wants. Hey, we're one step closer to the Disney Fox merger being official, speaking of Fox. After a bunch of ups and downs, the deal that would allow Disney to purchase all of 21st Century Fox's IP passed its biggest hurdle yet, the stockholders. A meeting was held this morning with the largest stockholders for both Fox and Disney, and if the majority of either studio's shareholders voted no, the deal would have been dead, but that didn't happen. Lots of yes votes means the merger is all but official. There's still a long road to it actually being enacted. The amount of paperwork involved in transferring ownership's gotta be gargantuan, but all the main roadblocks have been avoided. They've got a thumbs up from the Department of Justice, stockholders said yes, Disney's biggest competitor Comcast dropped out. The merger is expected to happen in the first half of 2019, and then I suspect the MCU is gonna get a lot more crowded. So I guess it's good that they're doing this sort of generational refresh of it. Yesterday was a bad, bad day for Facebook. You thought that Disney was gonna be spending a lot of money on Fox? Wait till you see what Facebook lost. The company's stock suffered the worst one day loss in market history after it reported disappointing earnings and slow user growth. Investors hammered the stock, which dropped 19% and wiped out $120 billion in value, which is an all time record. To get something kind of comparable, you have to go back to the dot com bubble bust in 2000. That's when Intel suffered a $90.7 billion loss on September 22nd, 2000. Also in that same era, Microsoft stock plummeted more than 14% in one day in April of 2000 for a loss of $80 billion. Those seem like a lot, but they kind of pale in comparison to what just happened to Facebook yesterday. It's been a kind of a rough time for Facebook. Lots of privacy concerns have been prompting a slowdown in user growth, and Facebook isn't the only social media company that's been hit. Twitter stock was down today too, after it announced it had 335 million monthly active users in the second quarter, which was 1 million fewer than the previous period. You wouldn't think that a million, when you're talking about hundreds of millions, would be a huge deal. Uh, of course, Twitter did recently purge a ton of suspected bot accounts, maybe contributed to that number. Still, as a result of that million 
million user loss. Its stock was down more than 18% today. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't ban your bots, I guess. How dare you? Anyway, that is all the news for this roundup. That gets us pretty ready for a weekend. Let us know what you're gonna be playing for the next few days in the comments down below, and as well as what you think of all the news today. And if you wanna make sure you get all the crazy updates from every corner of the internet every weekday, like this video. If you're new to our channel, subscribe to the now. League of Legends. <laughs> because no cardboard. The new kit will rely, will. Ryan Reynolds has it covered with a weird movie in development at Fox called Stoned Alone, which sounds like a squaw, sounds like a squaza spoof, squaza spoof. Ryan Reynolds.